Hi, welcome to this new series that I'm creating called Antique Radio Archaeology Snippets. Now what snippets are going to be are these 10 to 15 minute videos where I'm going to pull uh, little bits and pieces out of videos I've already recorded. I'm going to create some new ones. Uh, basically what they're going to be is tiny pieces of uh, the restoration process. Uh, things like winding a coil or rewinding a rheostat, uh, fabricating something, uh, a new faceplate, or uh, creating a decal, uh, just a new radio operation, uh, just a various number of different things that I do uh, to during the process of restoration. So the purpose of these is to help fill in those gaps that I have between these full-blown restorations because some of these things can, you know, there can be a a month to two months between a restoration sometimes and uh, I don't like to leave the channel just sitting there for that length of time so this will help fill in some of those gaps and uh, I really hope you enjoy them. Uh, the first one we're going to do is going to be on crystal radios and what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how crystal radios work and then we're going to try and create as basic a crystal radio as we possibly can so let's go ahead and get started. Now a while ago I did a restoration on a homebrew radio and I showed you this little microphone that I picked up which is nothing but more than a microphone that ties into a tube that allows you to hear yourself talk over the radio. Uh, it's kind of a toy more than anything else. Well along with this mic it had this little pamphlet in it and this pamphlet is a little price list of parts that you can buy from, from Fillmore. On, and this diagram shows you how you can make a little crystal radio with just a detector. Uh, of course, you got to have headphones, uh, uh, a antenna, and of course uh, some kind of ground. But uh, basically, it's a one-component crystal radio. So I decided to go ahead and try that out, and um, we're going to go ahead and replay that portion of the video where I go outside and and test it, and then we're going to come in and do a little more testing with it, just to kind of expand on uh, what we did in that first video. So before we do that, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how uh, crystal radios work. I'm going to have to first talk about how the signal itself is generated. Now a transmitter will take a RF signal, which is a high frequency signal that you can't hear, and it will vary the amplitude of that signal at an audio rate. Now when it does that, uh, you're going to see real wide areas of that signal and not so wide areas of that signal being generated in what they call a modulation envelope. Well what that's doing is it's replicating the audio that is being put into it. Now that modulated audio is what goes out the antenna of the transmitter. Now once it leaves the transmitter it's, it hits the receive antenna and what's going to happen there is that received signal is going to go into your radio components. Now if all you have hooked up is a headset What's going to happen is, if you notice on the modulation envelope itself, you have a positive side and a negative side. There's a center line that runs all the way down that. Anything below that center line is basically zero and below. So it creates an inverted audio signal. It also creates a positive audio signal. So if you really look at it, the outer edges of that modulation envelope is your audio. If you put a set of headsets on there, what's going to happen is you're going to hear nothing because the two signals are going to cancel each other out. So what you need in order to receive a radio signal is what they call a detector. And that detector can be in the form of a crystal. And what this crystal does is it basically only allows the positive side of that modulation envelope to go through it. The negative side is basically rejected. So once that happens, if you put a set of headphones on there, Theoretically, you should be able to hear that audio. Now you're going to have RF mixed all in it, but you can't hear RF, so it's really not going to affect things that much. You're not going to have that great of fidelity, but you're going and you're probably going to have all kinds of other garbage there to listen to, but uh, you'll be able to hear that signal. The standard crystal radio that most people are familiar with is going to be one that has a coil a variable condenser, some type of detector which could be the form of a cat whisker or diode. You might have a capacitor on the output of that and a set of headphones. So let's take a look at this diagram and here's what's what's going to happen. When you transmit a signal 
uh, you're not the only one transmitting. There are several other stations that are going to be transmitting at the same time. So all these signals are going out there, and they're all being received by this antenna. So once they're received by the antenna, what's going to happen is you're going to hit this coil, and you're going to hit this uh, variable capacitor. These two can be tuned to reject all the frequencies you don't want to listen to. So by turning that variable condenser and sliding that uh, coil slider, you're going to be able to narrow that band down to just the frequency you want to hear. So once it gets past that variable capacitor, you're just going to have one modulated signal. So once it gets to the cat whisker or the diode, that is going to remove that bottom half of that modulation envelope. And a lot of times what you'll see, now this wasn't common at first, but later on it became more and more common, uh, they would put another capacitor that was actually take all that RF that's contained in that signal and shunt it to ground. So that all that's left, once it reaches the headphones, is that audio signal. So that is a standard crystal radio operation. Now, what we're going to do is what I call a very basic crystal radio. And what that is, is we have an antenna, we have a detector, or the cat whisker, and we have a set of headphones and a ground. So what's going to happen is all those modulated signals are going to come in over that antenna, it's going to hit the cat whisker, and the cat whisker is going to remove the bottom half of that signal. So now you have all these signals going through it, but now they are audio and can be heard by the headphones. But the problem is, if you notice, you're going to have several frequencies all at once. Now, you would think what you're going to hear is just a bunch of hiss and garbage, but that's not necessarily true. What's going to happen is you're actually going to hear the audio of the strongest signal overriding all the other signals. Now, <clears throat> how well it does it all depends on your location, your antenna, a lot of different factors. But basically what's going to happen is you can technically hear one station using this method if it's close by and it's a very strong signal. So let's go ahead and give that a try and see what happens. All right, so like I said, I wanted to try out this little crystal radio configuration that this uh, little pamphlet has. And if you remember, it's nothing more than a headphone hooked to a detector, hooked to a ground, hooked to an antenna. So what I've got here is I've got a detector, an antenna, and I've got a ground connection. That's about a four foot ground rod going into the earth. And I've tied my headphone to the ground, the other side of it to the detector. It's looping through that antenna coming back out of the antenna and I've hooked the, the other end of the antenna ground to that ground as well. So my antenna is grounded and I have to admit I did uh, go ahead and tune this and it took me forever to get the right spot on this crystal so I'm not going to go ahead and do that again but it is playing right now. I'm picking up a local station. Okay so what I've got is an inductive amplifier right here and what that'll do is it'll allow you to hear what I'm hearing. So as you can see, it doesn't take much to get a crystal radio to actually receive. And this is a very, very simple crystal radio. It doesn't even have a tuner in it. It just has the detector, antenna, and headphones. Now, if I had a long wire antenna that's cut for different frequencies, I could obviously pick up other stations. What I do know I'm picking up is a local station that has uh, an antenna that's only probably about five miles away from here and it's a very strong signal. But I just wanted to show you that this does work. I have the same setup inside now and the reason why I did this is because my strongest radio station is actually my in-home radio station when I'm inside this room. Now unfortunately there's a lot of lights and everything so if I try to use the inductor you can't hear anything. So what I did was, I've got this uh, powered speaker right here. Now I can hear it in the headphones. I, right now I can hear my radio station just fine. Now, if I take the powered speaker, which it's hooked from this cable here 
I've got my ground hooked over here and this is my positive lead. And there you have it. Now, this antenna here actually has a built-in capacitor. And what happens is, if I come over here and turn this capacitor, nothing happens. Because it's switched out of circuit. And that's typically the way I use this antenna. Now, if I want to use that tuning capacitor, it's a 300 picofarad variable capacitor. All I have to do is switch that switch over here. And now, that's in. And so now I can receive the radio station that's outside the room. But like I said, I can do all this with without this speaker because I can hear it here just fine. Now, one of the things you may notice... If you listen real close, you can hear some bleed over between the stations. So yeah, you would need some additional circuitry to really get the selector going on that. So interesting uh, little setup here, but uh, like I said, it does work. Now I'm going to show you one more thing before I go. Okay, so what I did is took this thing off. Here's a diode. Just a regular diode. This is a, what is this, a 311X73 is what's written on it. And what I'm going to do is do the same thing. Let me hook up my powered speaker. Sports, local news, weather, traffic, or the shows you love. Call there you go. TV now at you don't need, that's all you need. The, the detector is nothing more than, that detector is nothing more than a diode. And there you have it. One diode. Antenna, ground, and like I said, I can disconnect the speaker entirely and just do it on the headphones. Which... And then if I switch that back, there you go. Now I'm just on the antenna and it's picking up the most powerful station because I no longer have a tuner. So that's it. Happy restorations everybody. Hope to see you again soon.